Robert Stadium has been Evansville's home for entertainment since 1956. With the opening of the new Ford Center, we take a look back at some of the great memories Roberts has given us. For 55 years, Roberts Stadium was Evansville's home for entertainment. People from all over the tri-state would travel to the stadium to see world-class entertainers, thrilling sporting events, and enjoy family outings. For years, the stadium was home to the University of Evansville Purple Aces basketball team, drawing thousands of fans at every game. From major performers such as Elvis Presley to an annual monster truck show, the stadium hosted it all. With the closing of Roberts, it's amazing to look back at the stadium's beginnings and the major events that occurred there. Plans were discussed as early as 1946 for Evansville to have a new sports arena. The initial proposed arena included a football and field house complex that would seat more than any other sports facility in Indiana. Eventually, the grand plans were toned down to what somewhat resembles today's stadium. In August of 1953, Mayor H. O. Roberts confirmed that the stadium would indeed be a sports center. It would cost a million dollars for the building itself and 80000 for land purchases. The law required at least 50 signatures to get a green light on such a big project. Thanks to the Westside Nut Club, the stadium project received over 1000 on March 14, 1955, construction began with Mayor H. O. Roberts removing the first bit of earth with an Evansville-made Besires Erie powered shovel. Thorpe Corporation, Griffin Electric, and Tri-State Plumbing and Heating were all awarded contracts to build the stadium. Despite the cost of the stadium and parking lot rising higher and higher, construction maintained a steady pace. My family, Palmer Seal and Lorreen Seal, my parents and my sister Ann, we would walk down three quarters of a mile down Division Street and we would see it, and I remember it as being a hole, and for a little kid that's five years old, seeing a hole that massive uh, was just incredible. But even with the project making good time, Mother Nature didn't always cooperate. On February 4th, 1956, a 30-foot section of wall at the uncompleted sports center took a $2,000 tumble because of heavy rainfall, and winter made things even more difficult. I belonged to the iron workers 62 years. I worked 35 years as a trade. And uh, when we set the last truss on Roberts Stadium, the uh, snow was about 11 inches deep, and they had the sunken floor dug, and we, they, we were afraid if we didn't set it then. Those tons weigh 50 tons, um, trusses weigh 50 ton to each half, 100 ton trusses. And we had two rigs with a big, just a building really set up down in the middle to, put, to set them on. And we was afraid the rigs would sly in the hole if we waited till the snow melted. So we got up there with, with that snow on and uh, set the last truss. Overcoming the winter months, the stadium was completed in the spring of 1956. The world-famous Harlem Globetrotters were the first event to be held there. My dad took me to see the Harlem Globetrotters with, uh, you know, the, what I considered the all-time best, uh, you know, Metal Ark Lemon and Tex Harrison and Curly Neal. And then, uh, you know, then eventually Wilt Chamberlain, you know, coming uh, right out of the college ranks from Kansas and playing. Most people don't realize that he, one of the few places he played was with the Globetrotters. Most people don't know that was here in Evansville before they went on their world tour and seeing him dunk a ball and uh, just incredible. It seemed fitting that a basketball game took place on that opening night because Robert Stadium developed a rich history in the sport. In December of 1956, the Municipal Stadium was dedicated at an Aces basketball game against Purdue. Through the years, Roberts hosted numerous Division II national championship tournaments and multiple conferences. The stadium was home to the University of Evansville Purple Aces basketball team, where they played championship games on their own court in 1959, 1960, 1964, 1965, and 1971. Of all the memories I have, and of course I was a sports writer for the Sunday Courier Press for four years, and I used to cover the games there too, but 1965 when um, Southern Illinois University came over to play University of Evansville in the NCAA championship game. The teams had played three times that year, counting the championship game, and only five points separated them. 
and Evansville won that game in overtime for the national championship. And uh, again, they were undefeated, 29-0. and zero. Full house, great memory, and a great, great, great game. The Aces definitely left a legacy, filling the stands at every home game. Uh, number one, I saw all five uh, national championship games, the, least, the last of which uh, was in 1971, my senior year, and those were my you know, classmates and everything. But I remember as a kid going out there and walking around the stadium, the concourse at that time, and they had you know, what seemed like as a little kid, life-size uh, photographs of all the aces around the wall. Uh, now I've seen them, they're not, they're probably half life-size, but as a little kid you think they're life-size. And, and then getting, after a game you got to go to uh, the locker room and take the Larry Hill design program and, and go back in the locker room and you get the autographs from Jerry Sloan and Lynn Motts and, and Larry Humes, and et cetera, et cetera. So it was quite a thrill. It didn't always take a college game to fill the stands. The high school sectionals always promised a packed house. First of all, I was a senior in 1956-57 at Central High School when the stadium was built. So uh, I can remember going to the first year they had events there and almost every event they had was a full house. Um, and that year, of course, they had the high school sectional there for the first time. It always had been played at the old Central Gym, which is now the old YMCA gym downtown and you could only get 4,000 people in that old gym. So when they built the new stadium in 1956-57, uh, you could seat 13,000. It was the first time people could actually get a sectional ticket for years. So that was one of the biggest memories. We actually could go to the sectional without having to uh, try to bar beg, borrow, steal a ticket. I mean, uh, they were all available. Every high school had their own section in the, in the stadium. So you always had your own colors and there was major team rivalries. It's like, it'd be like modern day and rights. To go to the stadium and see modern day and rights play in the sectional would, was just phenomenal. Even though sports pulled huge crowds at the stadium, the music was just as important. Since before the stadium opened, This Is Our Story, a band concert involving all EVSC upper grade school students, as well as certain high school students, was a huge event in the community. Parents, as well as those who just wanted to enjoy a night of music, came from all over Evansville to listen to the performance. I've participated either as a, as a, a player, as a student, or as a, as a teacher, and I've directed the mass groups on several occasions as well. And, uh, and I did the honors band and orchestra, uh, an honors band actually, for five years while I was on the staff at, at, uh, with the instrumental music. And this last year that was the last one that they did, then uh, my, I was invited to come back and, and to just read the, the script and do the, do the, the script for the, the final performance of it out there, which was kind of sad in, in many ways. And Concerts from nationally recognized musicians made many memories at the stadium as well. Every act from Elvis to Metallica performed there. Band leader Lawrence Welk held a concert at Roberts and sold over 13,700 seats. As impressive as selling that many ticket sounds, country music star Garth Brooks was able to practically triple that number, selling three shows in 80 minutes. The 1960s and 70s were an important period for music, and very influential artists of the time played at Roberts group called Blood, Sweat, and Tears when I was in college, and they played at uh, uh, Woodstock. And here this is like, uh, I guess, a year after that. They came to play at our homecoming at the University of Evansville, which was at the stadium. And I got the honor of going to the airport and picking up David Clayton Thomas, the lead singer, and some of them, and, and taking them to the hotel, and then eventually to the stadium and everything. And, and uh, that conversation, and to meet someone that was at Woodstock, and to meet someone that was uh, just a tremendous voice, one of the best voices I've ever heard. He didn't look like a front man for a rock group because he had, you know, uh, he was kind of portly and he had uh, corduroy jacket and patch sleeves and stuff, but that's the one that really stands out to me. And I remember when I was 16 years old, I played, I've played. i been playing music for a while now, so I started when I was 16 playing professionally, and I've been playing now for 40-something years, I'll leave it at that. But when I was 16, I got a chance to go see Led Zeppelin for the first time. That was my first rock and roll show. And to see Led Zeppelin for the first show, and that was after their Led Zeppelin second album, Communication Breakdown, and, and A Whole Lot of Love, I sat in the audience, and I, I was playing acoustic music, so I was doing Bob Dylan songs, and uh, at that time it was Bob Dylan in America, 
and to see Led Zeppelin come out and play with Robert Plant and Jimmy Page, it was phenomenal. I mean, I sat there in the audience and kept thinking, that's what I want to do. I want to be like those guys, man. And uh, it, it, it literally it changed my life. Artists like Kenny G could also captivate the audience and leave a lasting memory. The one that stood out most to me was the, was the Kenny G concert. And um, of course, he, um, when he started out, he, he started um, um, with his play soprano saxophone, of course, and, and he started out way up in the corner of Robert Stadium. And, um, and um, he um, started playing from up there. And of course, it was amplified with, with the mic that was hooked to the bell of his, his instrument. And, and, um, and he played the one song as he transitioned all the way down to the stage and his band was already on the stage and which was kind of kind of neat because there's always a sound lag that far away from from um, the stage to where he was and uh, uh, it was it was just it was a good good concert and uh, well attended and it was nothing to see 12 to 13,000 people there for for concerts like that if you wanted family friendly entertainment Roberts was the place to be since the opening of Roberts, the Hottie Shriners hosted their three-ring circus at the stadium. Spectators could see exotic animals, clowns, and even television stars. My first memories of, of Roberts Stadium were at the Shrine Circus. And I remember my parents used to take us as kids. And so they had live performers as opposed to cartoon characters back then. And uh, one of my favorite shows was the Beverly Hillbillies. I remember Granny was there. And then they had the Rifleman there. Uh, little Joe from Bonanza was there. It was awesome. Uh, probably one of the most memorable characters was Batman. And uh, he came out and did his little show. And then they shot him out of a cannon. And when I went back and read uh, one of his autobiographies about Adam West, he said that was a, a low point in his life that he finally realized that he's no more than just a memory, and it was kind of sad. The stadium's last major event was a concert by Kenny Chesney. Chesney was able to pack the house like many major artists before him one final time. The stadium was not limited to just influential artists. Great political figures such as Robert Kennedy, Ronald Reagan, and Barack Obama all made speeches there. Robert Stadium became more than just a building. It was a place where the people of Evansville could celebrate cheer on a sports team, and even mourn. The University of Evansville students took their final steps to adulthood there. People experienced their first major concert there, and anyone that walked through the gates was impacted in some way or another. Some were impacted more than others. Thing And Lawrence Welk was the biggest act in show business, believe me. He came to uh, Robert Stadium, and when he came to town, he always picked a local, what they called Miss Champagne Lady, to go along with his show. And I went to the show and I watched Lawrence Welk with 13,000 other people, sellout crowd. And uh, the local Miss Champagne lady that day was a gal by the name of Sharon Frobeater. Well, little did I know, five years later, I would marry her. I didn't even know her at the time, but uh, that was the first time I met my wife was at the Lawrence Welk show. Now that Roberts has hosted its final event, it's hard to not feel the community has lost something. No one knows for sure what memories the new Ford Center will create. For now, all we can do is reflect on the great ones that Robert Stadium has given us.